Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Now for me, when it comes to finding that perfect work watch, it boils down to three different things. Legibility, presence on the wrist, and above all else, durability. So when I found the Victorinox Inox, all three of those categories were filled. And then Victorinox decided to add a automatic version of the Inox uh, featuring an ETA 2824 movement. Now this doesn't have the same criteria as the quartz version, so it doesn't hold up to that you know 30 meter drop test and running over by a tank and all those fun little tests. But I don't think I'm going into a battlefield anytime soon. So let's take a look at the Victorinox Inox automatic. All right, so I have the blue dial variant. Um, it also comes in black and carbon. I also have it on this bracelet. You can get it on a leather and wood strap, and then you could also get it on a rubber strap. All right, so the case diameter is 43 millimeter. The lug to lug is 53 millimeters. The lug width is 21 millimeters, and the thickness is 13 millimeters. Uh, so it's pretty hefty. Now, when it comes to the bracelet, the 21 millimeter, it's kind of an odd size. You're not going to be able to put every single strap that you have on there. Um, with it being 21 millimeters, it's just going to be, your straps are going to be too thick or too narrow. It's off by a millimeter. I don't know why they did that, but um, that's just what we have here. So the bracelet comes from a 21 and it goes down to a 20 millimeter here at the bottom and then 21 and a half at the clasp. So it does have these large crown guards that block this crown, um, but this crown is seven millimeters and it has really good uh, deep grooves here. It also has a signed crown there. It's actually pretty easy and smooth unthreading. Clicks out. Two solid clicks. Let's go ahead and change that date here. So it starts to change the date around 11.35 or so. And then when it approaches midnight, nice solid click over. Adjusting the hands nice and smooth. Let's pop it out to the date again. Okay, and this position you can hand wind it there. Um, it is 300 meters, I'm sorry, 200 meters of water resistance on this. So having a nice threaded crown really helps with that. Okay, screwed in. The inside ring, you can see it's on military time, it has a 13 through 23. I guess, along that inner ring. The date wheel is right there, that 430 position, which is kind of weird. Um, it works though for this. I don't mind it too much. It kind of throws off the symmetry a little bit, but it's not too bad. The indices are applied very nicely. Some pretty good loom on there as well. This is a waffle dial on the back. It is a smudge magnet though. You can already see my thumbprint on there. As far as the case goes, it is stainless steel. Um, it's brushed here at the top and then polished on these beveled edges here. Now it is said to be a Swiss grade stainless with some anti-scratch um, coating on it. But as you can see, it is I have worn this quite a bit for work, so it is showing a little bit of wear and tear throughout. This watch does have a little bit of weight to it. Um, sized up for my wrist, it's 194 grams, which is, to put it into perspective, the DW5600 uh, G-Shock weighs in at 49 grams. So it's a pretty hefty watch. On the back of the watch, we have an exhibition case spec, which really shows off that ETA 2824-2 movement. Um, it comes with a signed rotor, and it says 26 joules, Swiss made on there. 
Um, and then on the back, it just has all of the writing on there that you would have. It has. It also has these QR codes on the back, and I guess those are for warranty issues. You know, if you ever have to send in the watch, they can just scan it real quick. So moving back to the bracelet, we have an H-Link style bracelet. It is brush on the sides here, and then on the edges, um, it's actually polished to give a little bit of a depth of effect. It's actually pretty nice. And then we come down here and it has these little half links. These are friction pins, um, nothing special about them. I would prefer some screwed links, but what are you gonna do about that? When it comes to this buckle here, it has your standard fold over clasp. We open it up, very sturdy. It's not coming off your wrist by accident anytime soon. Um, it does have a diver's extension, which I don't know how much use you'd have out of the diver's extension. I'd like to see some sort of micro adjust, but you know, to each their own. As far as the crystal goes, it's a flat piece of sapphire with three layers of AR coating underneath. It offers pretty good visibility um, in light. And then the hands do have a lot of loom on there. Let's put up a loom shot right here. And there it is, the Victorinox Inox Automatic. It's durable, it's hefty, awesome legibility. Couldn't ask for more in a work watch. If you like this video, please leave a like below and uh, let me know what was your favorite part about the Victorinox. And if you have another work watch that you like, go ahead and leave a comment below. And if you like my reviews, consider subscribing. Hit that bell icon, smash that subscribe button, and uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one.